Hello. Uh, so if you are asking why uh, uh, your printed program is out of uh, sync with what you see here, uh, the reason is that uh, I found out about that I have to give this talk yesterday at uh, around 6. So, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, there were some reasons why some speakers were not here, but uh, I was on the bench, and as any football team, uh, like the football team is as good as the subject. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you can uh, uh, hold on here, and thank you very much for being so many uh, at this, uh, this hour here. So uh, the talk is about uh, mostly about uh, uh, my background is in uh, doing compliance for medical devices, and in this industry you have to do a lot of documentation and to do it with uh, food or with uh, or pleasure. So if you are in this situation, I'm, I, I try to not be uh, too boring with the specific of the medical software and hopefully you can take something back, uh, back home. So, who am, who am I? Uh, so, I founded this company, Compliance Pal, uh, and the idea behind it is to automate the compliance activities that are required while, uh, if you are a uh, manufacturer of uh, medical device that incorporates software. And before the, uh, the, in the Implementation of this is like automating uh, GitHub workflows with uh, specific work, uh, specific compliance workflows and document templates so that makes it easier uh, to, to uh, uh, follow the regulations. Uh, before that, I have been for something like 17, 18 years in, uh, in Nokia Corporation. So I started uh, when the cellular was like uh, going up. And then uh, uh, I moved to Nokia Research, and the last part was developing medical software uh, and seeing what are the, let's say, uh, what kind of friction you get when uh, you ask uh, developers from different backgrounds to write good knowledge. Uh, so this is already well known here, no need to repeat it, but the idea is that, okay, so it, it looks quite simple, but actually uh, software is nowadays everywhere. So uh, we see a lot in online services, but it's basically start to be like embedded into the fabric of the world. So any kind of device these days tends to be or aspires to be a connected device. And the amount of uh, of this of, of the software that uh, exists in uh, uh, software devices uh, can be seen here like uh, uh, in the 70s this was research labs universities government so it go out into the, into the like, at large the industry adopted uh, software into more and more products and uh, they they need to come up with ways of managing how they are creating the products and of course, like the, the first one is like waterfall, so you have very well-defined uh, steps that needs to be followed in sequence. Uh, that worked for a while till like 2001, something like that around that time when the Agile Manifesto emerged. And the idea there was that okay, you follow the plan, but the situation changes, and you need to change what the software does, and it's kind of hard. It's not because the plan, you have some products, especially if the, you have to follow regulations, they have no product cycle, so there are problems. And Agile uh, provided an answer to that. But it was like coming back uh, from, the, from the waterfall where you have well-defined uh, phases of a project and you have like specialized people that take care of certain aspects of it, they were practically done by, uh, by the time we uh, <laughs> adopted Agile as an industry. And you ended up with something that was like really fast to change, but few people knew what was happening inside it. Uh, around 2015, I think that this DevOps uh, turn uh, got crystallized, and uh, uh, the, 
it, it's trying to put some structure into a library. So now you could, you could uh, you have automation, uh, you could uh, build the software automatically, uh, some of the documentation was brought back into the, into the process, and so on. And nowadays, uh, there are all flavor of things that are incorporated in, in, uh, in uh, the DevOps pipelines, which we have seen before, like the, uh, one or two speakers before me, they, they, they mentioned it. Uh, so I call them like DevOps plus plus. So uh, many people uh, call them uh, uh, their safe ops, uh, 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 and, and so on. So there are if, uh, many things that go uh, uh, into this, uh, uh, let's say, umbrella. Uh, but if you like uh, simplify things, so basically this is how, or, like, the, the most common use of, of Agile, how it looks like. So it is for Scrum. And the basic idea here is that you develop, uh, you have the, the requirements in the product backlog, uh, then uh, you have uh, increments for sprints, and in each sprint, the team commits to a subset of it, they are implemented, and then you have product, uh, product increments that are released uh, to the users, and, and uh, this is how it goes. But we all know that uh, we live in this, this world. So uh, developers are uh, hard to convince to work uh, on documentation because this is not uh, like fulfilling the whatever. I mean, there are many reasons, some like valid, some not so valid. But anyway, this is the situation. And you end up, uh, so you develop, every, everybody is happy, so you have a high speed, of uh, developing the product, and then there is the time to release it, and uh, yes, the version 1.0 is there, goes to market, the best medical product, and then uh, everybody notices that on the label there is, there is to be this small mark here, which is conformance with the, the regulations of the European Union. Uh, other, other geographies have their own, which might be like industry specific, like in United States uh, of uh, FDA, so Food and Drug Administration. So, uh, that is like a very small mark there. Some products have it with a label, stick on it, but what does it mean? So, in, uh, because we are in France, we will talk about the uh, European Union. So, there are two, uh, two bodies of legislation. So one uh, is, from, uh, is called the uh, Medical Device uh, Directive, uh, which will be superseded by uh, Medical Device Regulation from uh, May 2020. And they describe uh, what safety means for, uh, for a medical device in this territory. So uh, if you are not uh, uh, obeying these regulations, you are in big trouble because they are uh, big penalties, uh, monetary and uh, other uh, penalties for not obeying. And because those are, that is legislation, again, like very few people understand what that means. So it's very, very difficult to, to, to see what the legal is, is, although the European Union translates them in all the languages. But this is how, uh, how it works. But luckily, there are. Uh, uh, ISO, so International Standards Organization, that comes up with uh, uh, technical, uh, technical standards which are harmonized, so you don't have to, to uh, uh, be concerned uh, with uh, uh, geography, so like what is in uh, Europe or in the United States, because they are uh, uh, the governments in all these uh, regions, they took care of it. If you, if you implement what they say, then that is fine. And in particular for, for medical products, we have three standards that are relevant. So uh, about quality management, you need to ensure that uh, you have implemented what the users expect and nothing more. Uh, and the risk management, that uh, uh, you have a unified, let's say, framework in which you assess the risks of your device. And the risk could be like there is harmless, that 
So plus one is harmless, if nothing happens to, to the user or to the uh, personnel that uses the device or the environment. To plus two, if there are injuries that you foresee, like uh, using the, the service or the device, uh, there are injuries. And the, the most critical is uh, plus C, which can lead to uh, uh, like critical injury or death. So you need to be very careful, like what devices these devices do. So, for example, if you have a cloud connected the insulin pump that is using uh, that it doesn't have a delivery or, or, or exactly once, uh, so the patient will be dead within like tens of seconds. So it's like that fast. Uh, and uh, this is like uh, the the last one of them is. Uh, a standard that defines what are the procedures that you have to follow uh, when you develop the software. And if you look at them, uh, they look uh, quite harmless. Or you could see even that they make sense. So you start with you start with the software development planning. There are the requirements analysis. How you define your software architecture. Uh, detailed software design. Then the software software is implemented, and there are. Uh, uh, unit verification, then it's like how you integrate all the pieces together, how you test your system, and how you release it. And uh, if you follow this plan, so remember everything was happy and beforehand, you have, uh, or many organizations, they have come up with this uh, invention, invention called the documentation sprint. And while you have a pile of, uh, so during the, the regular sprints, you create, a, <coughs> the teams are working and they create all kinds of artifacts, which are like requirements, wikis, commits, configuration, test, container, deployments, and all kinds of other things that, uh, so the list expands basically every day, so people are automating more and more stuff. And out of these artifacts, uh, in, the, the, in the documentation sprint, you need to create documentation for different audiences. And they are developers, they are designers, they are the architects of the system, the management, uh, system administrators, so the people, the, how you operate the, uh, the system, end users, and then, because we are like, talking about uh, regulations auditors, because they will come at some point to see what, what is happening. Then, This is like, uh, uh, so I, I'm from Finland, and this is the, the president of Nokia Corporation. And uh, so he's the guy that uh, basically saved the company. Uh, and this is how, 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 what, how he says it. Like, you think change is going now faster than ever before? No, so obviously it's not. You are looking at it the wrong way. So change will never be as slow as it is today. So. Uh, if you have a faster and faster pace during development time, uh, if you don't have automation when you create a documentation, there will be a gap that is like you will never be able to bre uh, bridge that gap or to close it. And this is obvious because uh, this is what is basic, what you basically see during the, the documentation stream. So there are all those artifacts. Like in a different state of decay, because that's like what is happening here. Yeah? So uh, people don't have time to update them. Uh, uh, people left the organization. People uh, forgot the, uh, why things are like they are. Uh, and I can say for myself, uh, this is like uh, you could even like look at it as. But uh, who was this stupid guy that wrote it? And the stupid guy was like you uh, one year ago. Yes. Uh, so things happen. So, uh, so far I have uh, uh, shown mostly what are the problems. And let's see if there are any, any solutions. So, uh, GitHub flow was uh, uh, introduced uh, or popularized by, by uh, GitHub, but in different flavor uh, is available to other Git vendors. Uh, so the idea here is that whenever you, you have a new feature that you want to implement, you, you make a, a branch out of the, the common uh, code, 
then there are some commit, uh, you, you develop the feature, uh, you add commits there, and when you think that everything is ready, you open a pull request, and then a discussion starts, and then you have a couple of rounds, like uh, the, the code needs to be corrected, new commits are coming, and then when everything is done, is 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 ready to march, and this one has worked like uh, amazingly well for for code itself, obviously. Like, uh, uh, but it has been adopted in, for other purposes too. So uh, we have infrastructure as code, we have documentation as code, we have many things as code nowadays, like security as code, compliance as code, like checking the uh, your cloud installation, whatever like you have uh, in, uh, in there. And uh, this is like, uh, instead of, uh, I don't know, looking for, for many things, like, well, we have a model that scaled quite well, why not use it? And if you have documentation tasks, and this would be like, uh, this is an example from Compliance Cloud, is that, of course, you should, GitHub provides you API to look into every commit. And developers are so familiar with seeing like, okay, everything is green, you have some tests that are failing. So the idea here would be that why not augment this workflow that worked so well with custom uh, checks that will tell the developers that uh, in certain situations you need more information. And uh, this is like the, the, the a commit check is like not very, very visible, but the idea there is that, okay, you, uh, you tell the developer that he needs to say what he has used, why he has used the third-party component, which is very common these days. And also uh, informing the developer how to fix the problem. He follows the, the, the instructions, makes a new commit, everything is green, perfect. So he does that, and then, uh, the compliance officer comes into the picture. And during the review, so the review is not only for developers. Anybody can be involved in a review in the GitHub or flow. And the, the idea here, in, 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 in my case, would be that I make a view that is, uh, 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 how to say, customized or uh, made specifically for this kind of audience, so that uh, they can get in they can, they can be feel, feel welcome into uh, using this tool and they could understand what is happening there. So the, the, the trick uh, or what is uh, the meaning of this is that there are, uh, there have been changes in, in four, uh, or there are four uh, uh, dependencies changes and the yellow ones are changes and the green one is new. So again, like uh, coming up with a, Common metaphor into this kind of track change system, so even the text editors they have it these days. So you do all these activities as uh, in a continuous way. So uh, you have uh, a seamless experience. Uh, Git and uh, through all the uh, vendors, like each flavor, they provide the APIs so that you could extend and create new workflows. So, uh, for this one, like if you are a developer and an architect, everything is fine. So you already have everything that you need. So, uh, visual code in this case, uh, because they need to they need to uh, uh, to use uh, YAML or uh, other things to uh, or this form us to, to produce the content, to have vehicles, everything so that to make their life easier so that they just play along. Yes, if they if, if the tools play nice to, to the audience, the audience will eventually play nice. And then for these other people that are not like the, the GitHub does not cater or the, the, the UI is not uh, appropriate, you create uh, customized UIs and just hook into the flow. So, to uh, conclude, uh, ideally, you should start from the beginning. So, know in which environment uh, you are, for, or for which environment you are developing the product, 
And if you need to do any kind of documentation, uh, or you are mandated to do it, uh, just start collecting, uh, uh, let's call it metadata, or, or the, the thing that allow, will allow you later on to build, uh, to build the documentation. Uh, yes, and do it during development with each commit. So that is the time when the information is the freshest and is the most accurate. So uh, obviously the, the understanding and the environment or the, the thinking behind the system evolves. And the idea here is that you need to document it at the time when it happened with the understanding that you had at that time. Uh, it can change over time and that is okay. I mean, the same as the code, and everything it changes, you know, you have a track record of what happened. Uh, find a real use for the documentation. Uh, there are many cases where uh, the information that is collected for one purpose can be used in others. So it's just you end up with uh, a single uh, model of or source of truth, uh, and the documentation becomes like different views of. Uh, of the same uh, that are derived from the same same model, and do it for real and not by obligation. Uh, the nice or uh, the nice thing about about uh, these ISO standards, uh, which might sound a bit weird because as I said, like developers don't want to do it. I'm a developer myself. Is that they are practically best practices. They, they tell you what you have to obtain, not how you have to obtain them, and uh, they give you a lot of freedom of uh, how you can achieve the goal in your own environment. And then, uh, yes, I think that uh, after the... Uh, so, I wanted to have a slide, but you didn't have that time, so there is no one way to run the map. So, be uh, in a way uh, how is opportunistic. Use whatever is out there. Uh, these are ideas to take home. Uh, augment what is not there. Use what you have, and in the end, this everything is like DevOps, and uh, add your flavor to it. Your third or fourth plastic. Thank you.